Okay, so another thing that I thought was pretty cool about Raspbian is it almost was made for developers. Um, and the reason I say that is if you go up here under menu and you go to programming, look at this. We've got an IDE for Java, we've got it for Python, we've got some other stuff here. I don't even know what it is. Um, definitely interesting. Um, I do like uh, Java and I do like Python. So it's pretty cool that this stuff is all just ready to go right off the bat. Um, so let's take a look at Python. Okay, that's going to load up the Python shell for us here, um, where we can kind of see things going on. Might as well basically be the terminal. Um, but let's, uh, let's create a new file. And this is just going to be a little Python module we're going to write. And we're going to experiment around with turning this relay on and off from a Python application. Okay, so by default we might have Python installed, but we actually need to import a Python module to allow us to interface to I2C devices on the bus. That module is called SMBus, and it's very, very easy to install. All we need to do is open up our terminal again. We're going to enter sudo apt-git install python dash SM bus. Okay, so now we've got SM bus installed. That means we can use Python to interface to the I2C port. So let's go have some fun with that. So we'll go ahead and close our terminal. Uh, and our Python application, the first line we want to put in here is import SM bus. That is basically going to allow us to access that SM bus module that we just installed. We're also going to import time. Okay. So now we need an object of that SM bus. To do that, we're going to say bus, the name of the object we're creating, equals SM bus dot SM bus. And we're going to enter the port number, uh, the I2C port number, uh, which on the Raspberry Pi on, on our particular setup is 1. Okay, so we'll do that. And now the first thing that we need to do is we need to configure all of the lines on our uh, on our I2C device, namely this relay controller. We're going to set all the lines to outputs. So to do that, we're going to put in bus dot write underscore byte underscore data, and we're going to pass that the uh, address of the device, which is zero x twenty, the register we want to write to, which is zero x zero zero and the value we want to write to that register, 0x00. Zero, zero zero zero. This is probably all very familiar. This is exactly what we sent in the um, I2C uh, set commands using I2C tools. And then we're going to put in a time.sleep just to be safe, probably not necessary. And then we're going to, uh, I always like to set the pull-up registers even if I'm not using them. I don't know, maybe it's just habit with this particular I2C device. I'm going to say bus.write byte data 0x20, 0x06, 0x00. We don't want any of those lines pulled up internally. Even though that doesn't apply at all because we're not setting it to inputs, I don't know why I have to do that. Um, but I just do for my sanity. So now we'll enter time.sleep 0 point five okay now what do we want to do well the world's our oyster at this point right so um, let's just turn the relay on and off ten times why not that sounds fun so we're gonna say four X in range zero comma ten that is just a for loop in Python And we need to put a colon on the end of that. Uh, I'm still new to Python, believe it or not. <laughs> I don't write Python that often. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's turn these relays on and off. So we'll say bus dot write byte data zero x twenty comma zero x zero nine the register to control the outputs and zero x ff. Let's start them all all on. Now we're going to do time.sleep.
That's the command to turn them all off. Right into register nine, writing a value of zero, and then we'll put in another time dot sleep 0.5. So we're just turning the relays on and off every half second. And that's that's pretty much it there. So let's uh, let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. So we'll save this. I should already have this in here. We're going to call it 10 cycle relay dot pi, okay? And then we can just uh, run the module right here, or you can hit F5 on your keyboard. Oh, there it goes, it's clicking. Alright, very cool. We just cycled the relay on and off 10 times. Um, we saved that file. Um, where did we save it to? We saved it to forward slash home, forward slash pi, 10 cycle relay. Uh, so yeah, we can run it from the terminal here. Alternatively, um, we can open up the main terminal and we can run it from right here. So we can say Python, uh, you always have to say Python whenever you're going to trigger a Python module. And then we're going to give it the directory of the module that we're going to run, which is home forward slash pi forward slash 10 underscore cycle. And if you hit tab, it'll auto complete for you. And then hit enter. And we can see it works just as well, uh, triggering it from the terminal there. Okay, so that's a, that, that's a cool first program. Um, just cycle the relay on and off 10 times from a Python application. Um, that works That works pretty good. Uh, what else can we do? Let's, let's, tell, um, let's tell it how many times we want the relay to turn on and off. Right now we have it statically set here to 10. Um, so let's have a little bit of fun and tell it how many times we want it to cycle. So to do that, we need an import. We need to import system, which is sys import sys okay and then um, right before we get to the for loop we're going to evaluate that argument that was passed to this uh, this Python application through the terminal so to do that we're going to use uh, we're going to say we're going to create a new uh, object called cycles set it equal to sys, uh, we need to cast this to an integer, int sys.argv object at the one index. Um, the object at the uh, zero index is actually the, uh, uh, the name of the script that we're running. Uh, don't ask me why they do that. He said I'm not a super uh, Python user. Um, just know that the first argument that you pass is going to be at index one, so sys.argv1. And all of this, all of these code samples are going to be available uh, on a repo for this uh, tutorial. So don't worry if you don't see all this. I'm going to have it all uh, spelled out where you can access it, and there will be a link in the description below to access all of that. So we're going to replace 10 now with that object we passed to it called cycles. Okay, so now we're going to go from zero up to whatever we pass to it. So we'll go ahead and uh, let's save this as something different. We're going to call it cycle relay dot pi. Okay, and now um, I don't know if from the terminal here you could actually pass an argument. Um, I've never really tried. I'm sure you can. I just use the regular terminal. So we're going to use uh, type in Python forward slash is it home forward slash pi forward slash cycle relay dot pi and right after that we want space and then a number of cycles so we'll put in three there you go turn the relay on and off three times pretty neat so that's a that's a very nice second python application i'm going to drop this uh tutorial uh in this, in this spot for now. 
we will definitely come back and do some more in-depth stuff. Maybe next time we'll take some readings on some sensors. But I think that this is a is a really good getting your dipping your toe in the water of using Control Everything products with a Raspberry Pi. Um, we used Python. You could certainly use Java. There are Java samples available on the website, as you can see. Uh, if you come back here, you've got Python, Particle, uh, Onion Omega, Python, Java, C, Arduino all kinds of stuff. Um, so, I mean, for Raspberry Pi, you're probably going to want to go Python or Java or C. Um, I've seen guys use Node.js. I've seen all kinds of stuff. You can, you can interface these products from almost any programming language that you want. Most of them have support for the I2C port. Um, and with the Control Everything offering, you've got a huge number of peripherals that allow your Raspberry Pi to interact with the world around it. So you can turn things on and off, you can monitor your environment, whether that be temperature or pressure or uh, movement, uh, motion detecting, all kinds of things. So definitely check it out. This is not hard. Do not be afraid of this. Um, jump in there and start using it. You're going to have a lot of fun. So we'll do some more tutorials in the future. Hope you enjoyed this one. You all have fun creating.